Okay, so in this video, I'd like to briefly talk about, um, well, about the quadratic formula and the vertex formula as they relate to one another, or rather as they don't relate to one another, because consistently on exams and so forth, when I give a word problem involving a quadratic, the most common error is to use the quadratic formula when you should be using the vertex formula or vice versa, using the vertex formula when you ought to be using the quadratic formula. And I, of course, understand the temptation to just, just dive into a problem. I mean, especially on a test, you're being timed. You don't want to spend a huge amount of time thinking about any specific problem. At the same time, this really is an error that, that is caused by diving into a problem without giving it any thought because the quadratic formula and the vertex formula are used for completely different things. I think that if you give it a little thought, you shouldn't confuse the two. So ju let's just look at a problem, the kind of problem that could appear on a homework uh, or on a test. We won't even solve the problem. Let's just give it a little thought. A ball is thrown upwards from the roof of the building. Its height in feet from the ground after t seconds is given by this quadratic equation. When will the ball hit the ground? And let's just think about what's being asked here. So here, is our quadratic. And we know how to find two things. We know how to find the roots of a quadratic. Only one of them makes sense in this context. And we want to, and sorry, and we know how to find the vertex of a quadratic. And we have got this graph of the time versus the height. So we can find one of two things here. The vertex is where the height is at its maximum. We would find this using the vertex formula. Or this point where the height is zero, we would find that using the quadratic formula. So what are we being asked? Are we being asked when the height has reached its maximum value? Or are we being asked when the height is zero? Well, the ball hits the ground when the height 
it is zero. So we would, I'm not going to go through all the details because that's not really the point of this video, but we would use the quadratic formula to find when the height is zero. We'd get two solutions and we'd select the one that makes the most sense. Or consider another equation. The number of breeding pairs of house sparrows in a city is quadratically related to the so-called human disturbance by this quadratic equation. At what level of human disturbance will be there be the most sparrows? And again, the point of this video isn't to work through this problem completely. It's to ask how would we start on this problem? So here's what this graph looks like. It continues down here, but Sparrow population can't be negative, so only this part of the graph makes sense. And we know how to find this, the vertex. And we know how to find these two points, the quadratic formula. How would we start this problem? I mean, we have two formulas we could use. Which of them are we looking for? And again, this is just a case of stopping and thinking. The vertex is the maximum value. What are we being asked for? Well, just for that. When is the population at its maximum? Maximum. If we used the quadratic formula, we would find where the population is zero. We'd find the levels of human disturbance that lead to extinction. That's, that's practically the opposite of what we're trying to do. We're looking for a maximum. It's given by the vertex. So the vertex formula, it is. So I don't, in spite of it being sort of my job, I don't like to lecture students, um, but it always is very frustrating to give a problem like this on a test and then see students use the quadratic formula because there's no reason for that kind of error. That's the kind of thing that happens when you start working on a problem without thinking about it first. So I, um, 
I hope you'll take this video to heart, even on a test, even when you want to get through the problems promptly. I hope you won't just rush in thoughtlessly, but we'll take a moment to give the problem some thought. Because if you do, I think this kind of error will stop occurring.